Namaste everybody and welcome to a flow yoga class. I am Apinya. First of all, Sin Dev say good morning and happy Halloween to me. I would love to say happy Halloween to each and every one of you who enjoy this, what is this, this celebration. <laughs> if you go out and having fun safely with your friends and families, and you have Facebook account, don't forget to post those photos on your account because I would love to see them. And I actually saw a lot of them already this morning. It's, it's cool. Taya will turn herself into a princess because her grandmother have these princess dresses for the first grandchildren that have been, you know, sent it to us. <laughs> I actually don't plan to do anything because of the COVID and, you know, Teachi go to school and we try to keep the distance from our family just to keep them safe. So we are not invited <laughs> to go to the family party. Jeff also teaches at school. So we're going to do kind of Zoom things. And Taya still do not, um, like she have a cognitive delay. So she still not really see the world like an adult so i feel like i'm still lucky that she can just sing a song all day long and she's happy with herself and i i don't need to tr drag her here and there so for that uh -huh. see in the past two weeks i talk about about the beliefs a lot so i want to bring those um wisdoms into our practice today so i wrote on the board that I always would love to see each and every one of you practice yoga from a sense from the feeling of acceptance that should come first acceptance and respect we have to remember that our belief many of them are hand me down belief you know it comes from our family our friends our teachers the thing we saw on TV, the thing we read, and many times we forget to actually examine them. We forget to questioning them and we just absorb them into our system and they become us. And I just want us to accept that. We accept, we respect, you know, we do the best we can to be who we are and everybody else around us do the best they can to teach us what they know but without examining and questioning the beliefs, many of them that are negative to us, it keep affecting us. And I want you also to practice yoga from a sense of love. Love is not easy sometimes. And it can be painful sometimes because if you love yourself so much, you have to be willing to question some of your belief. The belief that still keep you ill, keep you, keep you unhappy, keep you feel so irritated with things around you, keep you from seeing things positively, keep you from making skillful choices to live life better. Can you one day at a time now see you understand the belief allow those awareness in the yoga practice reminding you to be aware to be aware of the belief you have just we can just start right here on the mat that you are too old that you're too stiff that are too weak you can't see them accept them and love them enough you mean love yourself enough to start giving yourself new expansive and positive belief because from that place you can change you can grow you can transform yourself into a place of unhappy to happy and to also i kind of shift this topic again to celebrate a little bit of the halloween energy i'm gonna grab a couple of poses that says to me look a little bit it can look a little bit creepy if I want to, you know, put the story into it. But of course, 
It's going to be fun. It's going to be the challenge. Once again, your job is don't forget. Practice do yoga from the space of acceptance, of love, of respect, your body today. Having said that, close your eyes, please. I actually breathe in right away when I hear that, closing the eyes, because that opening, expanding, it comes with the inhalation. The space you create within your body, it comes with inhalation. And let that allow you to remember. that there are more within you, there are more space within you. There are room to take possibilities, to take on new information. To broaden yourself, to expand your heart, to love greater. And within that opening and expanding, feel and accept your body today. Know that we can start where we are. And we go from present moment and moving forward. Maybe accept that you neglect yourself for so long. You love others so much that you just don't take time for yourself. Accept the achiness, the weakness, the tiringness. Accept that it's real, accept that it's there except that it's a part of the body. And know at the same time that these things are not permanent. It change, it shift, it transform. It just need your love, the love that big and strong enough to keep giving what good for you, what healthy for you. It's not easy, but it's manageable. It takes persistence, persistence of loving yourself truthfully. And may you be strong, as strong as you can be in your practice today. Be a little, a little bit playful with this idea of, you know, Halloween feel and themes that maybe if I remember, I can bring it in and give you a sense of playfulness a little bit in your practice. You love yourself enough to be joyful, to be playful, to not judge yourself if you cannot do some of the strong poses. When your body is still stiff and cannot move at all, love yourself enough to know that it's okay. It's not about the pose anyway. It's about you know knowing the muscles, the mechanic of it, and you just slowly, gradually stretch them, strengthening them again and again and again. With that in mind, join your hands together right in front of your heart.
and we are going to chant Om three times together, everybody. Take a deep breath in. Exhale fully. Another deep inhale, please. And you bow your head toward your heart. Release your hands. Lift your chins. Open your eyes. Please lie down onto your back. Now, the pose that I have in mind is going to require to so check your hands and your feet when you're there. Our hip opening as great as we can in order to get into it. So this is going to be a good place to working the hip joints and the muscles around our hips, right? knees together. Drop your legs side to side, arms wide open. Let them come down to the floor. Don't forget to breathe. Remember that I care for more your sh I care more for your shoulder to be on the floor, even though your legs are not coming down to the ground. Right? The foundation has to be firm and rooted first, and we go from here to the happy baby. Yeah, right here. These hip openings right here, we're gonna need them a lot. So we get the first one here. Check again, hands and feet. And then bring your knees toward your chest and we are going to circle the knees apart. Like let them meet away from you and bring them back and repeat. Let's move the hip joints around. Change the direction please. And since we are on the back, feet on the floor, hip distance apart, let's do a little bit of bridge, please. For some reason, the pose is calling for me. So I give it to you. Extend the knees away from you. Press your feet down. Remember to push your feet forward isometrically. When that happens, on the opposite side, feel that your spine kind of elongate out through the crown of your head. I move my arm. You don't need to kind of elongate my spine in a space. Don't forget your neck, it still have the space, okay? Don't open your knees apart. Just let them parallel toward one another. And bring slowly your spine down to the floor, bit by bit. Here we go. Right ankle above the left knee, straight, and bend your left leg two, three times. 
and then draw your left leg in toward the chest with the hand and breathe. Deep. When you hit the limitation of your body, see if your mind become limited as well or not. So that is the awareness. And if it's happened, choose something else. Choose to respect the body and know that things will change. Switch side, the left ankle above the left knee. That the body can be flexible, or can be more flexible. And then bring your right knee whole. Maybe you wake up today and your body feels stiffer than ever before. You just gently accept your body. And with that love, you're just like, okay, I'm just going to do what I'm supposed to do is to doing yoga and stretch my muscles. We go from here to happy baby again, please. So give yourself a little resistance and a little bit more muscles in the arms and try to opening the hip kind of slowly. Like now this one is the second time around. And then you let go of your right leg and you work your left leg. Remember if you tie strap, it's good. This is another accepting things. Don't fight your body too hard. You fight in the space of that love that you props are helpful, use the props. Right? If you have to bend your right knee, you do no matter what. And then we are going to kick that left leg to the left. If you bend your right knee, opening your right knee to the right. So let that weight of your legs to help each, to help balance one another so your hip can stay facing the ceiling easier. Right? If you stretch your right leg, it's going to make it harder for you to Really keep your pelvis square toward the ceiling, so you have to use your core more. It doesn't mean it's not possible. It just requires more flexibility and more strength. If you have it, go for it. And bring it left leg up toward the ceiling and let it go. I'm not looking for the hamstring stretch right now. Right leg. Uh, happy baby, please. Remember your left leg, you can straight or you can bend. I choose bending the left knee because I don't think I stretch my hamstring enough to really ground that left leg properly. Ah, kick your right leg to the right. Like use a strap or not. No tension in your neck. Keep breathing nice and full. Check, check the quality of your breathing. It tells you a lot. If you overdo it, especially that. And bring it up toward the ceiling. And we go from here to 20 bicycle. Core, please. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and cover down to the floor with the chest. And from here, we're going to shoot ourselves up into both pose. If you can, if not, row on the side, on one side, and bring yourself up to both pose. Okay. Oh, wow. I managed it. <laughs> Breathe. Spine nice and elongate. Up. Soften your eyes. Ah. Feet down, hip distance apart, hand back behind you. I feel like this reverse table 
it also look a little creepy. So we look like a, a spider. Get your legs off on the floor, elongate the spine, exhale, hips down. Repeat, inhale, exhale down, and repeat again. While you're moving your hips up and down, remember that your foundations are really, really important. So you have to make sure that you never forget to check, even though you don't see your palms, your fingers, and your elbow, right? Two more. If you walk into the party with the reverse table, I think people will, people will be like, oh, wow, you really take the Halloween stream. Uh, left leg straight, right leg cross over, twist to the right, please. You really take the Halloween theme seriously. <laughs> or maybe you do a wheel pose and walk into the party like that. Inhale, untwist, get your right leg out. Heel to the groin, stretch the right side body. Here we go. Remember that your right arm, it can't go in so many places. Check with your shoulders, right? You can even hold it right here. Yeah. Mm. It feels pretty good. Yeah. And we inhale, move up and away from the left. Go all the way to the right. So you're going to come down to the floor and have your right hands down. I know I need block for the beginning of it. And left arms over here. Okay. Stretch the left side's body. When you inhale, breathe into your back. So it puff a little bit to the back. And when you exhale, turn your belly and your chest and elongate that left side nice and long. And get off the floor. Push the floor away. Stretch the right side again, inhale, and exhale. And we move up and away from the stretch. We're going to facing the left leg, so carefully turn yourself there. And you bring the weight onto your left leg, kick your right leg up, grab those blocks if you need it, opening the hip, breathe. And then cross your right leg behind your left leg. Yeah, so I'm like, if you need the prop, I'm just going to mindfully go grab it. So your right leg go behind your left leg. Cross leg Uttanasana. We are in the warming up stage. So feel comfortable to move your body around, shake your head, give yourself height. Right? But never forget to really keep that feet nice and firm into the ground. Yeah. Love your lower back greatly. Like if you need a lot of height, give yourself a lot of height. And then carefully inhale, extend your spine forward, bend the knee, right leg back, pivot to the right, heels are in, toes are out, skandhasan, and get into this hip stretch. You can go as low as you can take your hip to the floor in the respect of your adductor muscles and your lower back, like challenging your body mindfully. That mindfulness is your chances to bring expansive, positive, new belief into your practice, into yourself. Okay. And carefully, we're going to turn toward the front of the mat so we can go into downward facing dog. Hand to the foot. Spread your fingers apart. Pedal your knees or sway the hips side to side or just work your shoulder blade up and together and send the chest back with your breathing. See which options work or anything else that I didn't see, I didn't see, I didn't say, it, and you has been doing it and you know it worked for your body. 
just do them. And we're going to go down to child's pose from here. And we move with breath right away. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Oh, no. Child's pose, sorry. Repeat. I just need the child's pose so the wrist is it's, it being a little more love than downward facing dog because it has less weight right now. Yeah. Two more, please. And then you come up to the tabletop, take a seat. Carefully get your leg in front. So we go on the second side, right leg straight, cross the left leg over, twist to the left. Inhale, breathe, elongate the spine. Exhale, when you twist, remember, chest go Left belly go right. Keep that awareness with your body. Yeah. Inhale, untwist. Left leg come out. Left arms overhead. Wait. You can hold your shoulder, you can keep it at the hip, you can hold the back of the head or you can elongate it, extend it alongside the ears or maybe even up to the sky, really opening heart, strong core. And come up and away from the stretch. We're going to go all the way to the back. And you're going to come up and balance on the left knee. Okay. Right arms overhead. Elongate the spine sideways. One more breath. And push the floor away from you. We stretch the left side. One. Whoa. Come up and away from the floor, turn toward your right leg safely. I'm going to keep moving forward, forward, forward. Keep, keep your left leg off on the floor, opening the hip, and then exhale, cross your left leg behind your right leg. So we target the lateral sides of our hips and legs right here. If you still have tensions on your necks and your shoulder, and your body can dangling low you have the chance to kind of let it go and shake 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 safely once again don't forget to keep your leg nice and firm to the ground Inhale, lift your chest up and away from the legs and exhale, knees bend, step your left leg back, pivot to the left feet parallel toward one another. Hug your chins in, push your thighs apart, hip back and up, chest forward and down. Now we go into this adductor muscles and stretch them as best as you can. Yeah, there's a leg, there are legs muscle, but they also attach into your hip joint. So the more I can get them to open, right? You can interlace your hands behind your back. So now, this is a space that you can still be flexible with the choice of what you want to do with your upper body if you can dangling them down to the ground. For us who are not able to go so deep, we don't have a lot of option with the upper body yet, and it's okay, you just work to stretch that adductor muscles by moving the hip back and chest forward, right? That's the elongated the elongation of the spine. Yeah. 
and carefully turn toward the front of the mat and we go into downward facing dog. Inhale, plank pose. Now a little bit more on the wrist here. Exhale, downward facing dog. And keep moving with your breath, please. And just warm up your wrist to its maximum as it can be. Two more. Last one. And downward facing down. Get your knees to the floor. Lift your right leg off from the floor and your left hand off from the floor. Extend them away from one another. Inhale, opening them apart. Exhale, back center. Inhale, beneath your belly. Exhale, extend it. Two more each direction, please. And get your left hand down, turn your body open to the right, right side, nice and long. Exhale, turn toward the floor, step your right leg forward as your lizard pose. Okay, these are your hip openings right here, I need that. So go as deep as, and stretch that muscle as deep as you can. Okay. You can go into, I mean, we look forward to be able to get the forearm to the floor while your knee is over your ankle, okay? You can cheat it by getting your knee toward your ears. We don't want that. We just do where the body can go at first. And we go from here too. Three-legged dog, so we're going to kick the right leg back and up, opening the hips, bend the knee, kick it to the left. Extend the leg, square the hip, come forward to plank, inhale. Downward facing dog, exhale. One more, inhale, plank goes. Exhale, downward facing dog. And come onto your hands and knee, and we go to the second side, please. Left leg, right arm, extend it. Inhale, opening to the side. Back center. Beneath the belly. Extend it. Two more. And your right hand down, right leg go back. Turn your left side nice along the left leg, sorry. And then facing the floor with the left leg, go forward and to the left. Lizard pose. Back leg is your options, and you can just go in and out from straight and knee bend as well if it feels right to your body. Like you love your body enough to be aware that each adjustment is essential if it feels right to your body. Like you may have to move around a lot to find that sweet spot of your stretch and strengthening. So the pose should give you possibilities, not a fixed looking one spot pose. And three leg and dog. So you left leg go back and up. Opening the hip, bend the knee, kick it to the right. Extend the leg square, the hip come forward to plank, inhale. We lower down this time, Chaturanga Dandasana. Nice and slow with control. And your foot back bend is right here. Give yourself that supple movement like a jellyfish. Check with your muscles and your stiffness in the body first. more breath here please and 
and downward facing dog. Inhale, plank pose. One push up, please. Balance in your right side, side plank. Exhale, facing the floor, left hand saving you, and then step your left leg forward. Extend side, angle, pose. Patsawa Kona Asana. You try to bend that left knee the best you can. Don't forget your foundation. And once again, you practice from where your body is in the moment. You know it will change again when it gets more warm up. Hands come down to the floor. Get your left leg back and up, inhale. Knee to the nose, round your back up. Keep it back and up. And we go from here to plank pose with your left leg lift or not, and we flow Chaturanga Dandasana. Pick your back bend carefully. Take two, three more breaths here. Still need a little warm in the muscles. And here we go. Downward facing dog or child's pose, please. Relax your jaw. Strong arms and legs. Hands and feet. And come forward to down dog if you in child's pose. And then we meet in plank. A push up here. Balance on your left side versus star center. Side plank. Exhale, we go toward the floor. Your right hand is going to save you from falling to the ground and your left, right leg go forward. And we go into extend side angle pose. Heel in line with the back arch. Work from the ground up and out. Hands come down to the floor, three-legged dog, hip square, right leg back and up, inhale. One time knee to notes, kick it back and up, inhale. And you come forward to plank or you can rest in chai pose if you choose. And then we flow, if you keep flowing. And my lower back, you feel much better here. And we meet in downward facing dog or chai pose, please. Great. Step your left leg forward between the hands. Inhale. Warrior three. We sit that pose for a little bit. Remember you have option, course, in, get, elongate the spine. Warrior two, right leg go back behind you. Breathe. Work that left knee 90 degrees the best you can, but extend the energy out evenly to both legs. Reverse warrior. Trikonasana, triangle. Straight the front leg, hips stay back. Extend the spine forward and windmill the arms. You can make the stand longer, which means you're gonna challenge the hamstring off your left leg. Even greater, remember, you can use block. Be aware and make the right choice. That is your new and expansive and positive action toward yourself. Yeah. And carefully facing the floor. Standing split, kick your right leg up toward the ceiling. Mm. 
square the hip, get your right leg back behind you. Once again, get into a lizard pose, please. Bend that left knee. Go as deep as you can. Which time around now? Make your kind of second time around in your lizard pose. Right, but we've in this shape of the legs probably four or five times already. So hopefully you can get into the pose a little deeper. And carefully make step forward Uttanasana. Chin in thighs out, inhale lengthening the spine. Exhale back. Inhale lengthening the spine. Exhale back. Your flow is here or rest, please. Inhale, lengthening the spine. You can step back to plank. Okay. Lower down with breath. Get your back bend in mindfully. And downward facing dog or child's pose, please. We are here in mindful dolphin pose. With block or not, you can interlace the hand in a triangle shape or forearm parallel toward one another. Each exhale, put your chest back through that shoulder blade to your feet. I want your pose to allow you to move with breath. Static will not take you far. One more breath, please. Chai's pose. Breathe. Allow the breath to carry you through. I'm talking about the mind, let it move. Lot, don't let it stuck and stick with that's the limitation of the body. And in downward facing dog, right leg forward between the hands. Warrior three, pick the variation. It doesn't have to be the same as the first size or the same, doesn't matter. Right? Cores in. What matters is you respect your body and be playful a little bit and warrior too. Those 90 degree right thigh is the key to get you deep into some of the fancy poses that I want to get you in. So do your best to work on that right leg. Do your best. Reverse warrior. Don't break yourself. I don't need that. <laughs> Trigonasana triangle. Up in the height. Feet better. Strong frame leg. Feel them hugging in toward one another. Feel them extend away from one another with the rhythm of your breath. We go from here to standing split. So square your chest forward. I hope. <laughs> Lovely. Lift up to the sky. Extend, extend, extend the legs and the body away from one another. And then we go from here, square the hip. I bend both knees. Get your left leg back. Get your body to the left. Adjust your right leg. Find the depth of your lizard pose. Look as light as a spider as you can. Can you see that? You get your body kind of parallel to the leg. You look kind of sp a spider-ish <laughs> looking. Go forward to Uttanasana. So make sure you move that front leg mindfully, right? We're opening it so much we have to narrow it when we come forward to Uttanasana. So keep breathing. Keep moving the body. Malasana, squat pose. 
So heels is down, hips is back, chest forward. Hug your shins in, push your thighs apart still. And you just sing as deep as you can. Yeah. Try to get into the spider looking things with the body. Oh, the quad is tight. Remember, I want your heel to be on the ground. It doesn't matter how high your hip are from the floor. And if you can, so safely, get yourself to sit down onto the ground. And bring your legs a little bit in front of you. Have your heel move in, your toe move out. Create a diamond, diamond shape, diamond shape with your legs. Spread your toe, extend your spine forward. And we go to the floor. Elongate the spine first. I don't care how low your chest go down to the ground. Right, remember that. Go as low as you can go, but with the respect of your lower back. Inhale, move up and away from the floor. We get the right leg extended, we do baby cradle the left leg. So you're gonna use the strength of your arms to push your leg back while your chest go forward, okay? You just want to get the left knee to go as far back as possible without rounding your back and wherever it's landed is all right. Breathe. We're going to cross the left leg over right or extend it next to your right leg. If you cross, get your knee on top of the knee and we stretch the hamstring. You either do Pachimottanasana or Ekapada Kamukhasana on your legs. And we go forward with the spine and grab those props if you need it right away. That, that stillness, it looks like the stillness in your pose. It should have the strength in it and also the surrenderness in it. You are balanced in both almost like a feminine energy and masculine energy. Yeah. Inhale, come up and away from the floor. Switch legs to your left leg, extend, right leg, baby cradle. Yeah, pushing that right leg back as much as you can. Remember that when you push with the arm, you have to resist with the leg just enough so the muscle is participate in the stretch. Spy elongate. If you can hold it with your elbows because you can go so far, great. and let it go and extend your right leg next to the left and bow forward or cross over. And stretch your toes and expand your spine forward and stretch the hamstrings muscles. Now inhale, in, inhale, inhale, come up and away from the floor. You extend both legs straight in front of you. We're gonna go into reverse table once again, if that is easier for your body or you do Piyavo Tanasana, which means you're gonna keep your legs straight. Upper bodies are the same action. So press your hands down, draw your shoulder blades back, chest, heart is lifted, belly is draw in, push the floor away, point your toes away from you. And breathe, yeah. And 
carefully come down to the ground. So we're going to go forward into Uttanasana. You go there safely, okay? Inhale, lengthen your spine forward, and we are going to flow one time. Here we go. And downward facing dog. Step your right leg forward between the hands. Get your left knee to the floor. Come upright with your body. Bend the back knee. Hold the foot with the hand. Square the hip. Hug the thigh. Root your tailbone down. Wow, a lot of detail. Elongate your spine upward. I want you to feel that your ribs is kind of a part of the leg. It feels so connected because you move back so much from kind of your sternum downward but your heart and your chest is opening forward okay then you have to find that sweet spot again when you balance and you know you can stretch stretch your hip flexor further you kind of keep your ribs in there but you bend the front knee further and extend your heart more up toward the sky yeah. it's not an easy pose. We go from here to Adishan Drasana, half moon pose. Let go of your left leg, launch forward, like you're gonna do warrior three, but you go sideways instead. And you turn your body open to the left. Use block if you have to. And we go from here to pyramid pose. Bend your right knee safely, square the hip, and land your left leg back. Straight both legs, square the hip, hug your thigh, core lift, elongate the spine, inhale, and exhale back. Your hands are yours. When you feel safe to challenge yourself further because you just don't want four part of the body to the floor, you can lift maybe one hand off the ground or maybe both hands off the ground. Yeah. Parivita Trigonasana or Revolt Triangle. Now your left hand is going to be on the floor. It can start by being underneath the chest. Okay. Or you can go more toward the right or maybe be on top of the foot or the outside of your right leg. Okay. Why you are twisting toward the right, remember that your spine is always elongated. Get the weight toward your left leg more than your right leg. Try your best. And carefully untwist. Bend the front knee, step your left leg further back. Kick your right leg back and up. Keep your hips square. Lift your left hand off the floor. Stability, stability. Maybe hold your left ankle. Breathe. Lift that right armpit up and away from the floor. Push your chest back, 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 back. Breathe. And pigeon pose, please.
carefully. We get the body up and away from the floor. We're gonna stretch the hamstring, not the hamstring, the hip flexor of your left legs once again. So this one's gonna be a little bit more, I mean like challenging. So bend your left knee, hold the foot with your left hand and get your spine upright. Now, if you cannot do it this way, you don't need to hold your left leg at all. So you do it more like a low lunge action in the pigeon leg setup, okay? So you can just hug the thigh, kick your left heel back, and extend your spine forward. Yeah, I can feel my hip flexor in the front, and it's feel also like more obvious on the lower back as well. Okay. Both are great, and both a challenge. <laughs> your lower back is key. Listen to it mindfully. Oh, I really love both. Mm. And carefully, we come out from it. Take a seat onto your right seat. Can you turn your body kind of to the left, opening your legs apart, and breathe? <laughs> check, 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 check. And we go into Upavista Konasana. Try to go toward the floor, close to the floor. Lie on the floor the best you can, wherever it is, wherever it is. Yes, sweetie, mommy teaching yoga. <laughs> Breathe. Inhale, come up and away from the floor. And you get yourself onto your hands and knees however you like. If you want to do a little bit more fancy, I just have to show you what you can do a little bit off the floor. Wait. So there's options. So wherever you are, we're going to get the left leg forward and right knee to the floor. And we come upright with the body, and hopefully we get all on the second size poses <laughs> to match the right, the first side. So here we go, hip flexor, stretch on the right leg, please. Half moon pose, addition drasana. Feel so much more room here. Yeah. Course in. Remember that you should be able to see the toes of your left leg. I don't really look at the toes, but by looking up toward my hands, I can feel the toes. So. And then pyramid pose. Your hip back elongate the spine. Breathe. And then Parivita Trigonasana twisting. Yeah, this one is more open. So I put my hand on the outside of the left leg. Remember to push the floor down and away from you. That's going to help you to send the weight toward the back leg. And you elongate away from that. Be careful with your elbow joints and your knee joints. You don't see them, but you can feel them. So listen to them and adjust to what feels right. You try to opening the heart. Arm is the last piece to go up. Make sure your shoulders is open first. Good. Yeah. Next, nice and long. And then you carefully untwist. Bend your left knee, have your hands down, step your right leg further back, kick your left leg back and up, hip square. Lift your right arms off the floor. Pigeon pose, left leg forward.
and inhale come up and away from the floor ah. we stretch the hip flexor of your left leg oh sorry your right leg either with holding the foot with the hand okay and then just root your tailbone down and elongate your spine up or let go of it square the hip hug the thighs you can even use the block to help you like keep the foundation more point to the floor so you feel more stability and just tuck your right toes under and kick the heels back and root your tailbone down and elongate your spine upward yep it works <laughs> it works oh my god And carefully, right? make sure that you have your foundation with a little loose of the muscles, and you sit onto your left hip and extend your legs in front of you. Here we go. Check, check, check. I will assume that our hip is opening enough to get you into the pose of the day for the Halloween theme is our crow pose. I feel like they look like a spider, aren't they? Because you know your body and your legs are here, so you look pretty, I don't want to say creepy, it's look like a spider. And you have a lot of hip opening already. What may uh, lack of is can be the strength because we're opening a lot and we didn't do the core strength enough. However, we're just gonna give it a try, right? So you go crow pose, bakasana, core in. You can lift your leg one at a time too, right? And come down. When I did that without help, I feel like I cannot get into my core enough. You do it again with prop. Yeah, yeah that's much better. Remember that you hug your shins and your feet toward one another, you push the floor away with the arms and try to get your belly, your core up, 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 the best you can. And then rest. It's a lot of work in the arms, a lot of work in the core. You don't want to sink into your wrist. You want to move away from your wrist by using your core and push the floor away from you. It doesn't make sense because the weight's still on your wrist anyway, but it does. So shake your wrist a little bit. How was that? Now the other pose that it will available for any one of you that can do Pasarita Padottanasana and you can go forward and under the leg far enough. And the next arm balancing pose is the Titi Basana, which we don't get a chance to do a lot. You can use the block. You can give it a try or rest if you want to. So what I mean by that, when you do Upavista Konasana, you have to be able to go under and behind. You can see my arm to go back far enough to the back and my leg can go forward enough. I can bend my leg. I don't need to keep it straight. And then I have my hand. This is the part that you're going to feel falling if your hips are tight. And you have your weight on your wrist, so you have to go into the pose mindfully. And you can just be right here and hug with your legs bent. But Titit Basana is asking you to kind of do Upavista, kick your legs straight while you let the hips go back and just go forward. Wow! <laughs> it's not easy. Do you give it a try? I'm gonna rest and wait and breathe and work my wrist and work my shoulder. <laughs> Everything else in Titi Basana, it's it's it has the same sense with Bakasana, but man, because of you have to go back a lot and you have more, I mean the waist is the weight that go into your wrist is different. It just make that pose feel something else. Okay. Another one that I want you to try is we go into, and once again, it will only be available 
when you can go low enough, okay? Now, if it doesn't work for you anymore and you are really weak right now and you want to rest, you can do leg up the, in the air and wait for us there, or you can do bridge pose, or you can lie down and have your feet together and knees apart. Sutta Baddha Konasana. But for us that who want to do a little bit more kind of animal looking spider, I think it to get into a lizard pose. And if you can get your arms, I mean your shoulder underneath the legs, that's how you can go further. So we can go into Ekapada Kavindasana too, but we don't need to straight the front leg. You can even have the back knee down and get the front leg off from the floor and hug it and kick it. Yeah, right there. This is challenging enough. Or you can have the back leg straight, make sure your front leg is under, and you get that leg off from the floor, kick it to the left, look to the left, bend your elbow and keep moving your left leg to the left. Wait, right. you don't even have to leave your right leg off from the floor. And you're just like, oh my God, how am I supposed to come up so carefully? You can just go down. Mm. If you do one side, do the others. Wait, that's another creeping. The animal looking. That's why I keep telling you, if you can get the shoulder underneath, underneath that front leg, one day do it because it will take you further. Right. So you get your right shoulder underneath your right leg, spread your finger. Hug the leg, lift your right leg, and kick it to the right, and you look to the right, and you bend your elbow, and you keep looking to the right, and have your butt up to the sky. Draw your shoulder blades back. And you can just come down with the cheeks, come down with the body. And from here, you can take shivasana. <laughs> Wherever you are, if you do a lot of the arm balance, give your wrists some love. Yeah. So good them. You can do it on your back. You can do it on your seat. Give your shoulders some love. So good them because they carry weight. Right. It's always with the sense of love and respect. Anything that I offer you and it, it doesn't like, it doesn't make sense for your body yet, you're just like, oh, see the possibility of when the body opening enough, what can possibly happen. See that you have that capacity. If it's be able to be done within other body, it also can be done to you you just have to take practice and take persistence. Okay, now from here, you come down to your back, right? Maybe you go into Sukta Baddha Konasana. I actually feel like this, it feels really good. You can put the block underneath the knee. Rest there for a little bit, or you can do lock underneath the hip, legs up to the sky, or you can do plow pose or shoulder stand yourself, right? Hmm. I actually would rather have the blanket underneath my neck. Be mindful with your choice, please. Or you can do the twist on your back. I leave it up to you now to listen and be aware. Be aware of what your body is calling. That can even happen. It's like it's calling you to do something. And it feels so right to honoring that calling from your inner space, not even from the teacher. The teacher Mostly, it comes from within you.
sing into that inner space, inner voice with love and respect. Know that your love, your respect, and your acceptance to yourself are honor, are inspire, are dear to some other's human body, human beings out there that need role models. May you shy your strength effortlessly. Shivasana. <laughs>